Hello students, welcome back to psychology class. Let us learn about mental retardation today. What is mental retardation? People with IQ below 70 are termed as mentally retarded. They have difficulty in learning simple tasks. American Association for Mental Retardation define mental retardation as significantly sub-average general intellectual functioning existing concurrently with deficit in adaptive behavior which are manifested during the developmental period. There are three features in this definition. In order to be judged as mentally retarded, one must have sub-average intellectual functioning. That is, his IQ should be below 70. Second feature is, there is deficit in adaptive behavior. Adaptive behavior means the person's ability to be independent or to deal with the environment effectively. They have problem with adaptive behavior. And the third feature is that this deficit should be observed during the developmental period. Developmental period is 0 to 18 years of age. Now let's see what are the causes of mental retardation. The cause of mental retardation is not clear. The study shows that it may be because of genetic factors like hormonal imbalances. Other reasons may be complication during pregnancy, lack of oxygen during birth, and head injury. Now let's move on to the classification of mental retardation. Previously, mental retardation was classified as idiots, imbeciles, and morons. Mentally retarded people are classified as idiots, imbeciles, and morons. This, these terminologies are no more in usage now and the term mentally retarded is uh, substituted with mentally challenged. Now we call them mentally challenged. American Psychological Association has classified mental retardation as follows. There are five uh, classifications given by American Psychological Association. Well, first one, borderline mental retardation. The IQ is 70 to 80. Mild mental retardation. The IQ is around 55 to 69. Moderate mental retardation. The IQ is approximately 40 to 54. And severe mental retardation. IQ around 25 to 39. And profound mental retardation. The IQ is 25 and below. Now, first one is borderline mental retardation. The IQ is 70 to 89, approximately 70 to 89. They have limited learning ability. Their overall intellectual, social, and emotional intelligence is lesser than normal people. They are, they are mental development can reach up to 11 to 12 years. They can get education till 7th standard. And if given proper training, they can lead a successful life. Second one is mild mental retardation. IQ range around 55 to 69. Majority of the population of mentally retardation belong to this category. They have problem with language. Their fine motor skills and social skills develop slowly. Fine motor skills where we use small muscles like holding an object or holding a pencil, eating, all these require fine motor skills. Social skill, interaction with others, communicating, listening, they, all these skills develop slowly. They learn to do simple tasks and can, they can learn to do simple arithmetic problems like addition, subtraction, and so on. And their mental development can reach up to eight to nine years. That means they can be uh, educated till fourth standard. And these are called educable, okay? And often these are given occasional training. 
and they can do well under supervision. Okay, next classification is moderate mental retardation. The IQ is around 50 to 54. They are called trainable. They can be trained in sheltered workshops. They can do simple tasks. They can take care of themselves, but these are not fully independent. They need supervision. They can do simple tasks. They can recognize shapes. They can acquire minimal language, okay, but they need supervision. Next is severe mental retardation. These have IQ around 20 to 39. These have limited language and motor skills. They develop a limited vocabulary. Then they have difficulty in expressing, difficulty in communicating with others. They develop monosyllabic speech. Just uh, using one word instead of full sentence uh, when they w want water when they need require water they just say water sleepy so one word is used and their immunity is very low and uh, they need supervision even while doing simple tasks because they are vulnerable to accident next one is profound mental retardation the IQ is below 25. They cannot take care of themselves. They need to be taken care by somebody else. Okay, they need supervision. They are institutionalized and they have multiple physical handicaps. Some cannot see properly. They have problem with vision, hearing and so on. So their ability, immunity is also very low and they can live up to eight to nine years. So mental retardation is genetic. There's no treatment for this. We need to take care of them with love, care and empathy. Proper training will help them to lead a better life in the society. Let's learn about different tests of intelligence. The first test of intelligence was developed by Alf Bine and Simon, as you all know this. Let's study the different classification of intelligence tests. There are various intelligence tests which are classified as follows. Now, first is individual and group test. It is depends on the contact. These are classified as individual and group. Another classification is verbal, non-verbal and performance test. That is based on the mode of administration. Let's see what is individual test. Individual tests are administered to one person at a time. So the advantage of this test is you can understand the test takers feelings, expressions during when you conduct the test. Disadvantage is you need many people or many psychologists to conduct the test. So it takes a lot of time and energy. Next one is group tests. Group tests are, can be administered to several individuals at a time. It saves your time, energy, it's economical. The disadvantage is you cannot see person's feelings, expressions while giving the test. Next classification is verbal, nonverbal, and performance. Let's see what is verbal test. In verbal test, verbal material is used. Here, language is used. Uh, the person who cannot read and write cannot answer these questions. So, language is important. Next is nonverbal test. Here, geometrical patterns or pictures are used as a test item. Geometrical patterns or Pictures are used as a uh, test items here. Next, performance test. Performance test requires a person to perform or manipulate a task to solve a problem. There are different uh, examples. For individual tests, we have Bhatia's Battery of Intelligent Test and Wessler's Adult Intelligence Scale. There are many other tests also. Here, you can these tests you can administer to one person at a, at a time. Second, for group test, we have example of Raven's progressive matrices 
Ami alpha and Ami beta. For verbal tests, you have Stanford Binet test and what is general mental ability test. These are the example for verbal tests where language is used. Language is used to ask questions. Non-verbal tests here, uh, examples is RPM, Raven's Progressive Matrix is a non-verbal test. Then Godard Form Board test, it's also a non-verbal test. For performance test, you have Batia's battery of performance test and draw manner. You have to perform a task to complete the uh, test. Next, the, some of the tests developed in India. Verbal test, you have group test of general mental ability by S. Chalota. Test of general mental ability by M. C. Joshi. Then performance test, you have Batia's battery of performance test, draw man test by Pramila Patak. These are the different tests developed in India. Next, let us understand what are the uses of intelligent tests. Intelligent tests are used for school children to decide on their intellectual ability, to decide their IQ, to see is to screen them for developmental and intellectual problems. They have any intellectual or developmental program pro problem we can understand through intelligent tests. Sometimes you find there is a sudden decline in IQ. So we can understand through intelligent tests. It can also be used for occasional guidance uh, for career orientation. To, uh, along with the aptitude test, intelligent tests can also be used. It can also be used for diagnosis. It's a very important tool for diagnosis of level of mental retardation so that you can give them proper training. Next, army recruitment, you can use it for recruitment of army personnel. For that you have a test army alpha and army beta. It can be used in neuropsychological field to assess the level of brain damage. Then it can also be used in institutions for recruitment purposes. You can also use them to guide rehabilitation program and also in clinical setting to decide on which therapy to use. There are many therapies like you have psychoanalytic therapy, behavior therapy, cognitive therapy. Now based on the intelligence of the person, you can decide on the therapy. The next concept is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is a feeling side of intelligence. This concept was first developed by Peter Salovey and John Mayer. Later on, Daniel Goldman popularized this term. He has written many articles and books on this concept. Now, EQ, EQ is a word used, emotional quotient is used to express emotional intelligence, just like how IQ is used for intelligence, EQ is used for emotional intelligence. Now, you may have heard people saying they are academically talented, but they are not successful in life. The reason here is they lack emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to understand one's own emotion and to understand others' emotion and act appropriately using these emotions. Key characteristics of emotional intelligence are self-awareness, mood management, self-motivation, empathy, and managing relationship. Self-awareness is recognizing one's own feeling. Consciously noting down what triggers anger in you, for example, or what causes frustration in you. So uh, knowing your own emotions will also help you to understand others' emotions. Mood management. Once you know when you get angry, what causes your anger, the next step is managing your anger, managing your emotions. If you're not able to manage your anger, for example, people will avoid us. If you're not able to manage anger, people will avoid us. We will not get into a suitable job. We may not get good friends circle. So mood management is very, very important here. Self-motivation. Motivation is an internal drive which pushes you to reach your goal. It directs you 
towards your goal. It energizes you or makes, makes you optimistic to reach your goal. Next is empathy. Empathy is understanding the feelings of others, understanding another person's perspective. Next, last one is managing relationships. When you know your emotions, when you understand others' emotions, you will be able to manage your relationship with others. Handling relationship, handling interpersonal conflicts are the main skills you require here. Uh, negotiating solution to complex problems, being able to give feedback in a way that the other person doesn't feel offended are uh, the necessary skills here. The this emotional intelligence is playing a very important role. Nowadays, there are many programs for children on emotional intelligence, which will help them to do well in the academics and in their future life. The next concept is artificial intelligence. It is a combination of expertise from cognitive psychology and computer science, which focuses on the development of computer-based programs that are able to perform complex tasks like humans. Like here, you are producing machines which are able to perform complex tasks which the human being is able to do. Like robots are the examples here. Human cognition involves the interaction of cognitive and biological system. Whereas computers operate mainly on cognitive domain. Thank you.